the history of werewolves is very interesting, but uh, there's like a lot less information specifically about like she wolves or like female uh, werewolves. Um, so the she wolf has a fascinating history that differs from many of the man turns wolf stories that exist as various points of lore throughout history. Um, there are a lot of theories on why werewolf lore is so prevalent in mythology and historic writing. Um, and it's possible that this stems from the fact that wolves of humanity have existed as competitors for hunting for most of humanity's existence. Hmm. Um, there's also a lot of correlation between the coming of age and puberty that aligns with werewolf lore. But I found a lot of really interesting information. So there's apparently a persecution of the possible werewolf transport transformation that seems to have a pretty like very stressful history and this is something i never heard of so i was honestly really surprised when i read it but we'll get to that after i define what a werewolf is in an article on history.com titled history of werewolf's legend uh define the werewolf as a mythological animal and the subject of many stories throughout the world and more than a few nightmares werewolves are according to some legends people who morph into vicious powerful wolves Others are a mutant combination of human and wolf, but all are bloodthirsty beasts who cannot control their lust for killing people and animals. Um, many werewolf sightings and historical accounts were generally associated with serial killers, apparently, which is interesting. Um, and more specifically, instances in which children were murdered and eaten by someone. Um, this differs from accounts within mythology and lore, as that largely seems to correlate with hypersexuality, hair growth, and existing outside the gender or domestic norms of the time. One thing that I discovered that stood out for me, though, was the existence of werewolf trials. Um, apparently, there were werewolf trials, much like, much like that of the Salem witch trials, that took place about 200 years before uh, in Europe. So in an article on history.com again, uh, titled Before America Had Witch Trials, Europe Had Werewolf Trials by Melinda Beck, some 200 years before the witch trials in Salem, Massachusetts, courts in Europe were convicting men and some women of transforming into werewolves and mutilating and eating children. The sure. punishments were sometimes as gruesome as the alleged crimes. In Germany in 19, or 15, 19, in 1589, executioners strapped accused werewolf peter stump mm -hmm. to a cartwheel removed his skin with hot pitchers and chopped his head off before burning his body at the stake stump's head attached to a wooden pole carved into the likeness of a werewolf was later displayed as a warning to others who attempted to consort with the devil That's um, the peter stump story actually yeah yeah i've heard that one um uh, apparently the article goes on to explain that the lore associated with werewolves largely overlapped with the general fear, fears of occultism, uh, interactions with the devil, and interactions with hallucinogenic plants, salves, and other methods of altering one's mental state. Uh, the result essentially... Mm, that helps. Yes, <laughs> I guess. I don't know, whatever the equivalent of bath salts was for the 1500s. Uh, <laughs> But the results were individuals conducting horrific acts of violence, murder, and other bloodthirsty rampages. Uh, there were some medical explanations for individuals that were mistakenly per perceived as werewolves throughout history that seemed a little bit more simple. Uh, medical experts theorized that some accused werewolves could have suffered from porphyra, which causes sensitivity to light, reddish teeth, and psychosis, uh, or Hypertrichosis? Hyper yeah, hypertrichosis, a hereditary condition that manifests in excessive hair growth. Um, lycanthropy, which is believing oneself to be a werewolf, and might have also brought on by deliberately or unwillingly consuming hallucinogenic herbs, mushrooms, or folk concoctions. Um, like so got any mental disorders, too. Yeah, and a lot of it seemed like... Uh, most of the trials started when someone, the reason that like they'd say what happened, um, and it was that a person dressed all in black approached them at nighttime, handed them like a salve or like something to rub on themselves or like mm -hmm. to drink. And of course um, they did. And then they did it. And then afterwards, like murdered a bunch of people. Um, sure. So, so like, honestly, what, it, what that sounds like to me is that they were going about their day, saw someone in the woods, they were like, here, take this. And they were like, okay. Um, and then 
it was like hallucinogenic or something like bath salts essentially and they lost their minds like they mm -hmm. went off murdering because they had injected something into the bo their bodies that was not agreed with them uh and they had a like, bad trip yeah a very bad trip in which children or other people were eaten or murdered <laughs> wild but there does seem to be some overlap between werewolves and succubi, as well as witches and other presentations of the monstrous femme creatures, in that they're all kind of represent similar things. Um, they stem with this fear associated with rejecting like gender norms, societal norms, and sexuality norms. Uh, but both werewolves and succubi have stories of baby eating and more aggressive sexual natures, as well as like this rejection of uh, motherhood uh, mm -hmm. and like domesticity um so the embracing of sex and sexuality not as a means of procreation but from a point of like pleasure and power um the rejection of domestic life as a whole was something consistently rec represented in the lore of the she-wolf um i found a book that spoke to this called she-wolf a cultural history of female werewolves by hannah priest and in the book they talk about the complex history of the she-wolf and many things that the she-wolf has represented in terms of societal fe fears um they brought up a shakira song in the book and it had some really interesting say things to say about it in terms of what the song represented so the lyrics of the song are a domesticated girl that's all you ask of me darling it's no joke it's like anthropy uh, and they go on to say, like, it just, thus, domestication stands as a sharp contrast to lycanthropy. So the existence of lycanthropy and the embrace of the vibrant femininity is a rejection of the patriarchy and domestic life. Um, the song continues, it's been, I've been devoting myself to you Monday to Monday, Friday to Friday, not getting enough retribution or incentives to keep me at it. Thus, lycanthropy is an alternative to the patriarchy archal control of both home and contemporary workplace the video itself shows live near nude contorting flesh both demand that both demands and threatens the male gaze hints of violence are offered and diffused by sexualized vibrant femininity um and that that video is like whoa. <laughs> yeah. she does think of her body i'm like oh my god i never could i am yeah. so inflexible how do you get um, your leg over there and then you're like hugging know. it I you know? know but yeah so the vibe that i got essentially is that it seems like the use of werewolf in lore is largely used to like one demonize anyone who does not exist within like feminine norms so like hair growth people who decide to grow mm. out their hair on their body um as well as like hypersexualization. So someone who's like, I want to have sex. I am going to be very forward about that and powerful about that. And that it's not something that I want to do inside of the space of like, I'm not trying to have kids. Yeah. Um, and that like the she wolf was used as like this way to demonize that. Uh, and also like kind of similar to succubuses uh, or succubi uh, were used as like a method to basically demonize women who did not want to just get married. Uh, mm -hmm. and exist in this space uh and that like existed outside of traditional domestic life um it was really interesting uh and genuinely terrifying that it was uh, always associated with baby murder and eating i thought that was like really upsetting um but i don't think i think I, if anything i felt like maybe that was like a really weird allegory for like even then when they didn't understand what it was to like miscarry or like mm. to get abortions at the time that they could associate that with that. And that was a way of demonizing that practice to like act yeah. as if it was this like werewolf like thing. Um, or just like the thought that if you don't want kids, then you must hate them and like are kind of evil. Like something is yeah. wrong with you as a woman if you don't want to do that. Yeah, and it seemed like that was more the thing that was being pushed. Uh, that specifically, like, if you did not want to lose, if you wanted to have sex outside of procreation means that you were a horrible, horrible thing um, mm -hmm. that deserved to be burned at the stake, much like the witches were. Um, anyone who, like, kind of just didn't fit societal norms. And this translates, honestly, to, like, the monster coding for, like, queer identity and everything else. It's just, like, yeah, they're really used as monsterization for a lot of things. Words, words and thoughts. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And also like thinking back to last week when we were talking about Lilith and the succubi, 
that also had a lot to do with like infant death as well. Um, mm -hmm. so it was it, interesting. it's literally related to like you don't want to serve the roles of what women are supposed to do. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it seemed like oh, succubi and werewolves kind of like overlapped a lot in the lore that was there. Um, and that like you could even argue that stories of succubi and werewolves had like similar backstories or like similar motivations. Mm -hmm. um, all essentially stemming from like, if you're not this kind of lady. Then you're doing it wrong. You're evil. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think like with this, the biggest thing wasn't just like, oh, uh, because like with... I think with male werewolf puberty times, it's still just like, it's kind of funny because it's just like, oh, we become a werewolf or our bodies are like this. And you also have like the playing around with like the alpha omega, which is, yeah. has been factually disproven as existing in wolf uh, <laughs> society. But mm -hmm. um, like when it, when you take that and you actually put it on these women, it, it transforms the entire story because it's more than just puberty at that point. It's actually like at a point when women go through puberty, it's not just like our bodies are changing, but it's also the way that the world looks at us is changing too. Um, yeah. Because now it's like, now it's appropriate for them to sexualize you. Now they can, because like now it's like, your body is saying it's ready to have children and that's like the only job that you have. So get to it. And that's like, it, the loss of innocence isn't just like I'm aware of what my body can do it's the fact that you are aware that everyone else does like yeah so uncomfortable and it like I think that's why it was really interesting the kind of that like exploration with um ginger mm -hmm. yeah like the realization that that is gone now like that their whole thing growing up was like hey we're cool. We we don't like boys. We don't. And like, honestly, the like pushing, it's like, I think in a lot of ways that the werewolf thing is, if you're not interested in boys, once you come to puberty, that that's like another thing that they're like, okay, monsterize you now. You don't want to engage in this long domestic life of procreation and then death. Um, that is a problem. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, it was really interesting, like the way in which the at first when I watched the gender snaps, I like, I was like, wow, okay. They really pushed her so far in the opposite direction of what she was like trying to be. And then I think feel like similar to Jim Jennifer's body. It's like, it was, no, this is what society expects. This is what society wants them to become. So they were going to become an exaggerated version of that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And being reduced to like your animalistic needs and desires is why she like reacts in the way that she does and become very overprotective of B and like all of a sudden she's sexual now like all those words like related to the fact that she is an animal like she's been reduced to an animal not just a person and I mean like outside of werewolf times that's a lot of the time what women are reduced to and it's mm -hmm. like messed up I wish my brain was doing a better job of having thoughts I think you've been doing a good um, job it's just like I'm like watching you talk and I'm like, <laughs> well, f f fun thing is I was actually thinking about this when we were reading. I, um, on like Facebook, I get uh -huh. like suggestions sometimes for different comics because I read a lot of manhwa. Um, uh -huh. and they have this like, we're in like, they'll every now and again suggest like really weird, cringy, like stories that are written like by teenagers or something. They're supposed to be like, <laughs> like romantic. Fanfics? Yeah. Um, and they, they had this one where it was, like, clearly this girl who was, like, a werewolf. Uh -huh. And it was, like, she, I ended up reading because the description was actually, like, the first two chapters of the book. And I was just oh. going. And it was very bad. But I was reading it anyway. I was, like, okay, all right, let's, I don't, I'm like, laying down on the couch. And so it was, like, this girl and she had, like, her boyfriend since she was, like, really young. But then they, at a certain age, you turn a a time and you're supposed like you then sense whoever your mate is supposed to be and then it turned oh, out okay. that it was her sister that was his mate so, oh okay <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, no, no, no. her sister is her i was like no, that's no. a problem that's weird no. <laughs> uh like he like came over and she was like really excited to like see him and then turned out to be your sister so now they're getting married and it's super awkward because he's like the lead of their 
he's their alpha or whatever and she has this whole thing and it's like really dumb because like they're like her sister wears like bodycon dresses and is like super hot and stupid uh and then she's like but i'm laid bed she's bella and then <laughs> there's like the lead wolves or whatever come like yeah. the, uh they call them um lichens instead of just wool like werewolves yeah, or whatever because yeah, yeah. they're like the royalty and they came and of course like the the big king lichen or whatever ends up being her mate and it was like stupid like she <laughs> turned around and like saw him from across the room like this she hasn't even said like hello what is your name she doesn't know who this is but he just like comes up and just grabs her and is just like this is mine now and i was like there's so much <laughs> that's here that's a problem and so like it could like when you're <laughs> like when you're exploring these things like i'm so glad that stephanie myers decided to write about vampires and not werewolves because she's so problematic for all the reasons especially the way that she portrayed the the werewolves and not yeah. including any indigenous people in the filming of that movie um yeah. but like it gets really problematic when they have like the wolf thing and the alpha omega and everyone has to like obey you and you're owned by your man and you don't get a say and i was like this is really gross yeah so that was a fun yeah. story for everyone to hear <laughs> i don't know what it's called but i read way too much yeah. of it yeah, sometimes <laughs> the internet will do that also i recommend reading the she wolf book uh they mm -hmm. had a lot of stuff to say i was like this all makes a lot of sense they're talking about buffy they're talking about becoming human they're talking about like the ways in which like uh the werewolves develop in terms of like the way over history that they've developed and the use of them they said lots of smart things that i was like i am not equipped in my current mental state to convey this appropriately so i recommend just like reading it it seemed like they they had a good point they had a good thesis they were doing the damn thing you know and, uh, <laughs> yeah yeah but you should read it yeah read that we'll include that in the links and then i did well read as... it it's just like <laughs> no yeah and uh also read barbara creed's uh, monstrous feminine that's a really great book just to read about how women are portrayed in horror. She talks about the exorcist. She talks about um, uh, the vagina dentata with uh, yeah. Freud, um, that weirdo and uh, <laughs> such a weirdo. And uh, there's a bunch of other like uh, explorations of, of like, it talks about the mother and um, all kinds of things, like the roles that we have to play. I think it goes into alien all kinds of stuff so if you're interested in those things and you want more than just like the pop that we give you <laughs> a little spice we give you every week dive in read those they actually did like a lot of research they wrote a whole book about it maybe one day we'll write books about something um yeah. but no right i now. make thoughts real good when i'm not exhausted mm -hmm. it's been a long I time like it's been a long time capitalism but, and it's the force of my life and your life and everyone's life hello um yes. capitalism is a wanna, patriarchy a lot of i'm just glad time. we're not all werewolves because i feel like I yeah it'd be like a bad time also like kind of, like i don't know if i was like she-ra werewolf time i'd be like that's pretty cool though she can do amazing things with her body um yeah shakira yeah like if i was a she-wolf in that sense that'd be dope but mm -hmm. um other than that <laughs> it does sound like a bad time i'm not trying to eat babies i feel like that'd just be like upsetting for everybody including the baby and myself <laughs> no at some point the baby won't even know and this is still very <laughs> upsetting i feel like that was like an ow why yeah um yeah i don't want to cannibalize things um, i already have a hard time just eating like regular meat um and apparently that's a thing too. It was something else in the book where it was like uh, mm -hmm. eating a lot of meat in a, like an abnormal way. Uh, kind of like in that one movie you watched uh, it was from Brazil. Yeah, raw. Mm -hmm. No, not raw. Oh, not from Brazil? Oh yeah, that was France. Not... French. It was the one with the werewolf lady. Oh yeah, yeah. Good manners. Good manners. Thank you. Yeah. And how like she was just eating like raw meat and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, that's apparently also a way that it's often portrayed. I forgot mm -hmm. about that movie for a little bit. Yeah. It's a good movie. Yeah. And you can check out um, one of the recent episodes of Black Women Are Scary because it's about werewolf baby. Nice. Look at our connects. Oh, thanks. Yeah. And next week, we're talking about vampires 
and yeah. you know we're going to continue on with our monstrous femme uh series talking about all kinds of monstrous women or femme presenting folks and how they are fighting back or just trying to live trying to live their best life and the only way to do that is to become a monster um it'd be like that so yeah i mean it seems like it's the better way to be outside of the eating of murder and murder times like it just seems like it's like anyone who just doesn't fit the norm is trying to do something a little different it's like is that actually bad was lilith any actually doing something upsetting she left really, man she could have yeah. just killed him but she yeah and she didn't you know she didn't commit said the about first that. murder yeah <laughs> okay that was his son so yeah. um yeah so with that being said uh don't get married oh it feels worse to say now after we just had all that context they'll eat your kids yeah because now it's like Real. it's not him eating the kids it's her eating the kids Anybody oh, eating the kids is a bad time. I feel like don't can don't cannibalize friends. Yeah, I don't know if you're already on your way to that or not. I don't think so. But, <laughs> but if this is what <laughs> if this you, is what you need to stop you, yeah, so we're here. You're we're welcome. here for you all. And I'm gonna fix my blog. I promise it'll make thoughts better than I have made thoughts today. I think you did a great job. Yeah, read words with your mouth and your face and your eyes. I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> All right, well, bye. <laughs>